They have two children, and Congressman, we're delighted to have you with us today and look forward to your remarks. And why don't we begin first uh, with you, Congressman, uh, Congressman Kirk. Well, thank, uh, thank you, and thank uh, the committee for having me. Um, since our uh, nominee for our ambassador to Beijing is not yet decided, don't you think that Senator Sasser looks tanned, rested, and ready? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm flattered, but I might debate, I'm going to make a Sherman F statement. If nominated, uh, I don't think I'll serve this yeah. time. <laughs> it would be a great comfort that you know the difference between your Arumchi and your Kashkar. So. <laughs> I also want to highlight, I think we got a couple of mids in the room. You guys from the Naval Academy? Uh, no, sir. What? Uh, West Point, all right. Well, th thank you guys for serving. <laughs> Since I'm still in the uh, fleet, we'll see you out there in about three years, I figure. I, um, I uh, saw a great problem with regard to U.S.-China relations. Um, uh, when I was a staffer before being elected and then uh, uh, elected in 2000 along with Adam. Uh, when you look at uh, the rise of China, the country that I believe is the most important country in the foreign relations of the United States, uh, we saw three tribes of the U.S. government and how they looked at uh, the PRC. The White House tribe, be it Republican or Democrat, that had a nuanced uh, and a uh, fairly sophisticated view towards Beijing. Uh, the Senate tribe uh, that at least saw Beijing as a series of ups and downs. And then the House tribe that was relentlessly negative uh, towards China. With maybe a majority of the view on the Republican side that China represented a military threat and a majority view on the Democratic side saying China represented an economic threat. Uh, but a decisive majority that they were bad. Uh, Congressman Rick Larson and I had a different view. And so, uh, we, as we say, we, we bought China low when we founded the U.S.-China Working Group uh, right after the CNOC uh, debacle. And yes, Rick Larson and I were one of the 15 members of Congress who voted with CNOC uh, and uh, to not have uh, congressional action on that. Uh, we have since grown uh, our group to uh, now over 60 Republicans and Democrats, by far the most active country caucus on Capitol Hill. A wonderful dinner, you bet. Yeah, yeah. A wonderful dinner the other night with General Scowcroft and uh, Secretary Albright with new members to attract them to uh, our group. Our group is, um, uh, we are open to all persuasions uh, on uh, China, which uh, have been divided in the House of Representatives between panda huggers, dragon slayers, <laughs> and panda slayers. <laughs> These are the very hardliners, yeah. We don't ask anyone to come to uh, any particular view on China, but what we have found is that there is so much misinformation uh, that um, uh, the greatest error being committed on the floor of the House of Representatives is lack of knowledge. Uh, uh, for example, during the CNOC debate, if I had said, as you know, uh, China does not allow any U.S. oil investment in China, everyone would say yes, when that is completely not true. If I had said, as you know, China is not supporting any U.S. investment in the oil sector here, everyone would say yes, that's not true. There was a, a whole host of errors being created for what was the most important uh, economic, diplomatic, and military relationship of the United States. We have since uh, put forward um, a fairly aggressive agenda. Started out with uh, just having a hotline uh, between the Ministry of National Defense uh, and the Pentagon. In my role in the military, I command the war room of the Pentagon. And so these days, uh, that hotline is now exist and ready to go. We almost used it during the impeccable incident. Uh, we've gone on to look uh, small and large uh, on the big front to see new emerging issues like uh, space cooperation and maybe a common docking ring for the Shensu vehicle in case uh, the Shensu was ever in trouble and uh, the International Space Station could be used in the rescue of Chinese Taikonauts 
or the opposite. For the logistics problems of the NATO army in Afghanistan and discussions about whether China could provide food and fuel uh, to support a mission which quite frankly is very much in the interest of China uh, to succeed on. A very large common uh, energy and climate agenda which ought to be uh, advanced heavily. Expanded counter-narcotic cooperation uh, now being told by the Ministry of Public Security that long ago Afghan heroin replaced Burmese heroin as the principal heroin of China and knowing that with Afghan heroin comes Afghan terrorism. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, looking at uh, the long term. In, uh, I come from Illinois. Uh, we are run uh, very top down in our state. There's only one real politician that matters. It's not the President of the United States. It's someone even more powerful, the mayor of Chicago. <laughs> and uh, he is very pro-China and has been leading an effort to surge Chinese language into the Chicago public school systems. We have picked up on that with national legislation to redress this balance between 56,000 uh, English-speaking Americans who have some formal Chinese language training and 200 million Chinese who have some formal uh, English training. Uh, I'm very happy that, for example, schools in my district have become the first elementary schools in the state uh, to put Chinese into the third and fourth grade, uh, which I think is very appropriate. And then Rick Larson's legislation to expand opportunities for small and medium-sized businesses, which give us real political power and influence to extend the dialogue, create the connections that are broadly based. Our one secret weapon, Richard Goldberg is here, who, Richard, why don't you stand up? A round of applause for Richard, who runs the China Working Group. Yeah. We told everyone that when you talk about China, you have to knock it down to individual uh, congressional districts. You can't say that business exports to China is up from America. People don't represent America. Unless you're talking to senators, you can't say business and exports are up from your state because in the House we don't represent states. We have now knocked it down to businesses and exports are up from the 12th district of North Carolina. And here's who it is. And that has been a tremendous benefit to us to extending what I hope will be a broad-based, bipartisan, and very accurate view to the dangers and opportunities of the relationship with China. Thank you very much, Congressman. Uh, I'd like to hear from Congressman Schiff. Senator, thank you, and uh, it's a great pleasure to join you and a great pleasure to join my colleague. Uh, Mark and I uh, have the dubious distinction that we were both uh, elected in 2000 in the two most expensive races in the country. His was number one. Mine was number one. <laughs> Uh, but we became the poster children for campaign finance reform and <laughs> teamed up early on McCain-Feingold, and that went well, so we're delighted to be joined again. And we, we serve on the same Foreign Operations Subcommittee and have a great opportunity to work together there as well, Senator. Um, as some of you may know, I represent uh, a district that has a very large uh, Chinese-American population. Uh, a quarter of my district is Asian, and most of uh, the Asian community in my district is Chinese. Uh, so I've had the opportunity to become very familiar with the work of the Committee of 100 uh, and enjoyed meeting General Fu as well as uh, other members of your leadership and particularly uh, have enjoyed reconnecting with some old friends of mine, uh, including a couple of my colleagues from the U.S. Attorney's Office, Deborah Yang uh, and Brian Sun, who is also here today, uh, but also with the classmates from junior high school and high school. Uh, Leroy Chow uh, and I were in uh, physics together in high school uh, and uh, I remember driving down the GW Parkway a couple years ago and listening to the radio, and they were talking to Leroy while he was on the space station. And so I sent an email to NASA, which they uplinked uh, to Lee, and said, uh, obviously you were paying much closer attention in high school physics than I was, because <laughs> look where you are. Um, but it's wonderful to, uh, to join you today. Uh, the committee does incredibly important work, uh, raising the profile of the three million uh, overseas Chinese uh, here in the United States and the, the vibrant Chinese American community uh, and uh, and I look forward to our continued work together in building the relationship between the US and China uh, these are difficult times facing both nations in the US we've seen a long wave of prosperity 
uh, come to a very uh, rapid uh, end uh, and a rapid decline. Americans are suddenly poor and finding themselves uncertain about their economic futures and have drastically curtailed their spending. Uh, the drop in consumption by Americans has severely affected China's export-driven economy. And millions of factory workers, many of them migrant workers from China's less developed interior, have been laid off. Uh, the construction boom that dramatically changed the skylines of dozens of Chinese cities over the past two get decades has slowed, leading to further layoffs and a vast reverse migration from China's booming coastal cities to the countryside. Chinese and American leaders have both scrambled to implement measures stimulus programs designed to meet these challenges. And importantly, both countries have resisted the temptation